Hey guys, it's Megan from Jamunky, and this is my interview with Javier Bardem, who plays Captain Salazar in the new Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, out May 26th. I want to know how long it took you to get makeup every day and what the black stuff you had to be oozing. Way less than it takes to you all. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours. How was it talking through the black goo coming out of your mouth? That was, as I call it, a monkey poo. Oh! oh. It was a liquid. Like they were told me it was supposed to be like chocolate. Nah, chocolate in my ass. Oh. <laughs> that tastes worse than that. So, And I was supposed to put a little bit on the teeth. I said, give me that. So I drank it, and then uh, I went to play the first scene, I think it was with Jeffrey Rush, and it starts to, to pour it out of my mouth, and he was very disgusted, and, and, uh, and I thought it was like a rage pouring out, right? It's not blood, it's like the rage of the character coming out, like, like something more physical, like a bull. I always thought of the character like a, like a bull, like a wounded bull with the blood and... Uh, like moving, like like wounded, like uh, and breathing, like out of out of breath, and with a very strong idea of revenge towards this little guy. Here. <laughs> so you had so much makeup, you know, packed on your face, and really intense emotions during the film. How did you portray that? Was it difficult to portray the emotions through all of that makeup? Very good question. Uh, that was one of my concerns, to see uh, if my facial expression can go through the mask. But these guys, which names I don't remember now, and that's bad, Chris, I think it was, they won the Oscar for Mad Max, these makeup people. They are young from Australia, and they did an amazing job. And uh, once I had the mask on the face, I realized that I could express myself through it, which is important, otherwise your performance is killed by it. And one of the things that these special effects people have done so well in this movie is that they've brought magic into the performance without killing it. Like the hair, mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic. And they could have gone maybe more or stronger on it, or, uh, but they are right in, this, in, the, in, the, in the right place. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's there, but it doesn't kill the physicality of the performance. So how did you become involved in the project? Uh, I got involved back then in 2010 because uh, Penelope was shooting Pirates 4, so I went to, this, to the set in Hawaii, beautiful place, and uh, Los Angeles, I was, and London. And I was very envious. I was very jealous because I, I was seeing all this amazing production taking place, the wardrobe, the special effects, the boats, the sword fighting. And everything. I want to be one of those. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I talked to, I said to Jerry, Jerry, please give me a job. <laughs> is um, that easy? He just, he just no, I said that because I, I thought that he was going to say, yeah, right. But then he, he called me five years after, and, uh, and I was like so surprised and honored uh, because as a moviegoer, I love the franchise. Uh, so I knew that production wise, and experience-wise, was going to be great. Now it was a matter of what's the story and what can I bring into the character. And when they gave it to me, I thought there was this great thing about one same character played in two ways. Uh, when he's alive, and it's all about pride, and it's all about honor. And when he's dead, which is like, it's all about betrayal and pain and revenge. I, I liked it. So, and it's a Disney movie, you have to bring it up. You have to lay it up because it's a family movie. But uh, but even though I think it's very powerful, it has some powerful moments. It's amazing. So whenever you saw yourself, like after all the CGI was put in and stuff, I mean the finished product is absolutely amazing. Can yeah. you tell us about? What that yeah, was? because I was working a little bit on the darkness with uh, not with the makeup because the face was there, but the hair. They showed me some pictures and videos, and it was like, yeah, right, looks great, but I mean. It, how is it going to look like at the end? So when I first saw the movie, having in mind that I was never on the sea, the whole movie was shot on studio. So I didn't see the, ship, the sea for a second. That's not true. The scene on the beach, uh, when uh, they are escaping from the sharks, and I'm getting close to the shore, that was uh, an amazing beach, uh, a natural park called White Sand Heaven in Australia. I mean, 
beautiful. Crazy. The, the, the sand is that white. And, uh, but the rest, it was on studio. And when I saw the movie, it's like I've been on the sea forever. <laughs> it's, it's, and, and what I most uh, was amazed by uh, was that the hair. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like hypnotic, no? It's like, it is, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazingly done. Now, you've played some pretty out there villains in the past. Did you pull inspiration from previous roles, or did, where did you find inspiration for this? I tried to, to, to see what's the thing that makes them different from each other. And I'm saying that I haven't done so many villains. I've, I played three, which is No Country, Skyfall, and this one. But I guess the movies are very powerful. Uh, in their own genre, and and it has some echo those villains because the movie had some echo, uh, and there are different genres. Being Skyfall and this one similar in some ways because it's a fiction world, fiction in the sense that if you play villain in James Bond or here, you have to, as I said before, bring it up a little bit because people are expecting that. When No Country for All Men it was a, a drier movie, a drier story, and more. Uh, uh, yeah, like raw, like boom. So, uh, no, the only thing that I was inspired by was the idea of this wounded animal and, and also the idea that those at the, uh, uh, at the time, in those times, the, the, the Spanish army was very powerful on the seas and the captives were from the south of Spain and the south is where the flamenco is, the whole bullfighting culture belongs to. So I didn't want. I want to bring some of that flavor into the character, which, for a foreigner, it won't be that uh, obvious. But for a Spanish audience, I guess they will, they will get a little bit. It's a little, a little bit of a glimpse into that. So, I know that you do a lot of artwork that's really stunning. When you, um, at the end of a long day, do you ever go back and, and draw or paint anything that inspired you during the film? Yeah, uh, some of, most, no, most. I would say always. I bring my own sketches and. Not because I want to impose that, but it's how I see it. And then, of course, somebody that draws better than me does, does it. <laughs> but it's like, actually, actually, uh, I studied painting, and uh, I wasn't uh, very good at, at brushes. I was more into the pencil uh, and the ink. And I've always been drawn into faces and bodies and expressions. So I, that's, I guess that's why I'm an actor, rather than landscapes. Or motorcycles, I draw people's faces. So I'm good at that, and I, I li and I like to bring that part into my process because it's something that I imagine, and um, yeah, and I brought that. But of course, then they did, they did it better. <laughs> Have you tried that floating hair on your painting, or is that kind of <laughs> No, no, the floating hair was an idea that the directors brought, and I thought, okay, but what do you mean floating hair, like? Like that, <laughs> like a, like a troll, <laughs> like but floating. No, no, no. And then little by little, they were bringing all these uh, drawings and concepts, and and I was amazed by it. I said, yeah, sure. No, I, I didn't write. I didn't draw that thing. What's it like working with Johnny Depp? And what was the chemistry like on set? Um, I met him in 1999 in Mexico, in Veracruz, doing a movie called Before Night Falls by Julian Snavel, and. It was an independent movie, a beautiful movie about a, a gay uh, Cuban poet that was uh, 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 imprisoned by the Castro regime and then he came to the States. And a very important figure in the Cuban culture, also in the gay community. And there was two scenes that he came down to play for us as a favor uh, to Julian, because he knows Julian's novel. In one, he's, he's playing this... Uh, very uh, strong Q1 general and the other one he plays a drag queen so he went down to play that and I was on the trailer and I went out of the trailer and I saw this beautiful blonde uh, <laughs> her and a beautiful ass walking. oh no it was Johnny and I said that's a beautiful ass <laughs> and then they say it's Johnny's it's a, it's a beautiful ass I don't care. <laughs> and then I said that to him. I said, I don't know you, but you've got a great butt, man. <laughs> and, uh, and since then, we've been good friends. <laughs> and, uh, 
and he was uh, he's he was a gentleman then. He was super nice, very caring, uh, very funny, and don't giving himself too much importance at all. I remember it was so hot. We were we were shooting on the on the on the roof. It was summertime. It was 3 p.m. We were all people were like fainting out of the heat, wow. and there was only one umbrella. And of course, the production went running towards him with the umbrella, and he was like, "No, no, the umbrella is not for me. The umbrella is for Javier because that's the guy who has to keep shooting when I leave. You need to protect him." And that was without making too much noise about it. But I, I saw that from, and I, I thought that was that talks a lot about him. Yeah, it meaning, well. meaning, and. When I did the movie now, well now in, fi- in 2015 it was, uh, it's the same guy, uh, except that he's playing <laughs> Jack Sparrow, which is a, an iconic character, and he's talking to you normally, and then rolling, boom, he becomes Jack Sparrow, and it's so funny to watch. And he will do and say a- a- anything, and it will be brilliant. So I have to cut sometimes the scene because I was laughing. I, was like, I cannot make it. I can't hate you. <laughs> Basically, I cannot hate you, but uh, he's a great colleague and, uh, and a beautiful guy. Make sure you subscribe so you check out more interviews from the cast.